So we're doing something a little different. This is not a restoration video. It's not a repair video. It's really just a cleanup video. This is a ordinary working Model 2 Sega Saturn. There's nothing wrong with it other than it's a little dusty and has some stickers on it. I never had a Saturn growing up. I really wasn't a Sega kid growing up. I had Nintendo consoles. That's kind of what I always had growing up. You know, Super Nintendo, N64, had the NES, had Game Boys. My first deviation of that was the PlayStation. Never really was interested in Sega consoles until Sega went away. And this was my first Saturn. I, I picked it up not too long ago, found it on Facebook Marketplace, listed locally. What caught my eye, it was listed as a Sega Saturn, but the picture was actually uh, a box of a Nintendo 64, the, the pod racing bundle that they had. Uh, so that kind of piqued my interest, and I sent a message, and I was able to, uh, to snag it. Uh, seller claimed it worked last time she used it. It didn't come with a power or video cord. Chances are that they had them in the house. They just, you know, it's in that drawer of cords we all have. That's a rat's nest. So, you know, had a power cord laying around. It's just, um, you know, it's your normal almost figure eight, polarized figure eight AC power cord and was able to pick up a video cord online cheaply. And it, it works great. It came with controllers, um, came with some games, and I've been happy with it. But I really didn't put the time into cleaning it up or taking the stickers off. And that's what we're going to do today, and we're just going to kind of talk about it a little bit. You know, the, when the Saturn came out, that was really... It was part of the fifth generation war, so it was fighting with the Nintendo 64, the PlayStation, the Jaguar, as well as the 3DO. And these were really interesting times because, you know, there was such a leap in graphics quality and game quality. And even though I was that Nintendo fanboy, I really thought the Saturn had it in it to, to be king at the time. Um, and there was, some of this was misunderstanding, some of this was just being, uh, you know, a child that read magazines and thought everything that we put out was true. But one of the things that got me, and it might have got you as well, this cartilage port at the top here. Now, obviously, this is for, you know, action replays or, you know, memory expansions, but I thought as a kid, this was for Genesis cartridge, that you can put a Genesis cart in here and play, and it... It almost fits. Obviously, it's not what it's for, but you can see uh, the similarity that if you saw this in a magazine of the day as one of the black Sega memory carts, you would think, oh man, man that kind of looks like a Genesis. Maybe we can have some backwards compatibility, but that wasn't to be. Instead, all of the games were on CDs, and they came in these really attractive long boxes. I, I love long boxes, whether it's for the Saturn, for the PlayStation, the 3DO, just something about these big box. I mean, there's so much excess in here, um, but I love it. They're great. They look good on a shelf. Um, these were actually uh, the same cases that the Sega CD came in. So if you had the Sega CD add-on for your Genesis, you would get very similar boxes. And it was said that Sega had a bunch of those left over, and that's why the Saturn came in those boxes as well. So this is a Model 2 Sega Saturn. You can tell that easily from the buttons up front. The power and reset buttons are circular in the Model 2. In the Model 1, they're more oval uh, or maybe even a teardrop uh, shaped. The open or eject button for the CD on the Model 1 is a little longer, I believe. I don't actually have a Model 1, but I think it's a little longer. And the Model 1 also has some vents on the side. Other than that, they're functionally the same. Uh, some people would argue that the Model 1 outputs a little better signal, especially if you're doing any sort of um, RGB work, side-by-side -side comparison. The Model 1 supposedly puts it out. I can't find anything that would definitely answer that, but it's really, anytime we're talking about video quality, a lot of it is personal preference and the type of monitor you use. Uh, but this is just a regular Model 2. I'm running S-Video through it, and I'm perfectly happy. Although, I'm probably going to explore some alternate video options out for this. S-Video is great. It looks great on my CRT, but if we can do better, I might. We'll, we'll see. So, like I said, it's not a, not a restoration. We're just going to clean it up. We're going to talk about it a little bit. And, and that's about it, you know. 
the the previous owner had these stickers on it. I'm not really a sticker guy when it comes to consoles or just really anything. I don't even like bumper stickers on my car. But they chose to put them on here and we're going to remove them and try to clean up the area around it. Everybody seems to have an opinion on the best way to remove some of these. You can get a little spudger in there, maybe a guitar pick, pull them off a little bit. Luckily, somebody was in here before me, so the sticker went over where the plastic separates, and it looks like they cut that off. We'll see why they were in there. There is a little, a little bit of a rattle inside, so maybe they went to repair something, maybe something broke. I'm not sure, but I do assure you this does fully work, so whatever that rattle is doesn't affect anything going on inside. So these are peeling off fairly easily. The stickers on the side are a little thicker. I would assume that these were probably promotional stickers meant to go outside, maybe on your car, if you're into that sort of thing. I debated on keeping this one in the corner here. It actually looks halfway decent. Uh, nice Sega Saturn logo, almost squared off in the corner, but there's a little bevel down here where that sticker sits, and there's some dust under it, and it's gonna peel up eventually. Now, I hate doing this with a screwdriver because you always risk damaging the plastic, but because it's overlapping a gap, I can get in there maybe pry this up. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Always very cautious when you're doing any sort of work on visible top layers of plastic. You really don't want scratches, gouges, or blemishes to ruin the overall look of, of the console. This one was giving me problems earlier. We might, might come back to this one. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, that's ripping right off. There we go. Now, once we get this second part off, we're going to go and try to scrub some of the leftover adhesive off. A um, bunch of different ways we can do this. A lot of people jump to more harsher chemicals, uh, something like Goo Gone. I like to start as light as possible and work my way up. If I could try to avoid introducing chemicals onto surfaces of older electronics, I try to. Now my go-to, this is honestly, unscented, unchemical baby wipes. I, I think these things are great. You can buy them incredibly cheaply online. And, and really, you're looking for the ones that is just a wipe with water on it. There's no cleaning materials in here, but they do very well at removing a lot of residue and just cleaning up in general. So it's getting some of the goop off because it's getting caught in the fabric and if you want to get a little more umph behind it we can get some rubbing alcohol and combine that on top and the rubbing alcohol will help get rid of that my next step after rubbing alcohol is usually windex that does pretty well and it's i, I think it's a lower contaminant. I think it's a little better for you and the plastic. After that, we'll go for something like Mean Green or Simple Green. And at the very last resort, then we'll jump into Goo Gone. All right, well, I think it looks pretty good. Did a little bit of more cleaning off camera. Uh, I really can't complain about it. I think um, without the stickers, it looks great. One thing I want to point out, on the back of the Saturns, we have this little door. And if you open it up, you see a, actually a pretty large space. The most important thing for everybody, there is a little button cell battery down here, and that is for the internal clock. And I find it amazing that the Saturn had this so easily accessible, but the Dreamcast did it. Systems like the Dreamcast, the GameCube, you actually take the whole thing apart, you have to desolder the battery, put a new one in, it's just so easy to get to. 
and you see this big cavity in here. There's a lot of extra space in here. There was uh, an add-on card, and you would slide it in there, and it would allow your Saturn to play back video CDs. Not DVDs, video CDs. Uh, really popular in Asian markets, not so much in North America. So we're going to open this up. Uh, before we do, we're just going to put a cloth under it so we don't scratch anything. There are five Phillip head screws that keep the case shut. So we're going to open these up. Top lifts off, nothing connecting the top to it. Uh, the light goes through this little clear plastic channel, so you don't have to worry about snagging any cables as you pull it. Uh, everything looks good in the top here. I thought we were missing some teeth on the eject mechanism. Nope, that looks fine. Everything actually looks really good on the top of this, so we'll place this over to the side. And even on the inside, everything looks nice and clean. There might be a little... What is this? Maybe a little corrosion on the metal around the CD. Is that, or is that just discoloration? I don't know. It's not, I'm not too concerned about it. Maybe we can just see if it can wipe up real quick. It doesn't, it doesn't look like rust. Maybe that's just the color. Yeah, manufacturing air? I don't know. But that seems to be fine. Uh, like I said, it does work, so I'm not too concerned about the gears that travel the laser. Everything works fine with that, and they rotate perfectly fine by hand. So while we're in here, the, the main concern, I wasn't going to open this up, but I do want to see if I can find out what that rattle is. No. Uh, you know what I bet it is. It might be, there is some extra travel in that reset button. No, maybe, I don't, I actually don't know what that rattle is. I expected to see something broken off in here, and I don't. And I guess that's a good sign, I'll take that. But no, I mean, it's, it's incredibly clean on the inside. Um, it's, it's a great system to work on. Uh, to clean out. There's not a lot going on here. We do have a user replaceable fuse up here if, uh, you know, if you had some power issues with it not turning on right away. But other than that, that's pretty simple on the inside. Not a whole lot you need to worry about uh, unless you wanted to replace the optical unit with uh, a Phoebe or a similar device where you actually take this whole thing out, unplug the wires, and then you could put in um, a module in here that would read all your games off an SD card. Uh, and it's something you need to think about uh, as consoles get older, uh, optical drives fail, media starts to fail. Uh, there are replacements out there that still allow you to play it on original hardware, but with a different data entry device. So we wouldn't be using optical discs, we would be using SD cards. I, I have no intention of doing that with this unit. It it's been working great, and I'm gonna ride it out as long as I can. Personally, I, I like to use games or programs on actual hardware, on actual media. Uh, rarely do I do emulation. The only thing that um, I've substituted more, and it's really more in the Commodore and Apple II world, I do have a, a floppy emu and a, and a Pi 1541, uh, just because it's, it, it's easier than handling five and a quarter floppy disks, but that's, that's for another video. So uh, we're gonna get this uh, closed back up and we're gonna end the video. Well, as you can see, everything's working. This wasn't a too in-depth video, just really a, a surface clean, make sure everything's fine on the inside. We're going to be doing some more like this. I got a couple more systems that can use a nice little cleaning, but we're also going to be doing some more in-depth troubleshooting and repair videos as well. Hey, if you like what we're putting out over here at Retro Tech or Die, please like and subscribe.